ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منه ما رجال كثير من نساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع كل كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Our praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His aid and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our souls and from our wicked deeds. Whom shall Allah choose to guide? Then no one can misguide. And whoever He misguides, then there is no one who can guide them. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah alone, without any partners, and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is His servant and final messenger. As to proceed. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayyu al-ikhwa, akhawat, al-hadirun, wal-mustami'un. We thank Allah azza wa jal, wa nahmaduhu, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for facilitating for us another gathering among the people of Sunnah where we come together and we study and we review ilm al-nafi' beneficial knowledge. And no doubt, ilm al-nafi, beneficial knowledge, ikhwan, is the best from the matters which are sought after. <clears throat> and it's from the best things upon which one spends their time. Naam. As the path of ilm is the path that one treads, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their path to paradise easy as it comes in the authentic narration. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the organizers of this seminar, this seminar. At the head of them, Akhuna Sheikh Hassan ibn Hussein Abdi, a Somali, our brother Hassan Somali, as he was muwaffaq in reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him tawfiq in choosing this topic that we're studying, this tremendous book by Imam Sa'di. And this is because, Ikhwan, no doubt we're living in a time where many people, they've lost their way in searching for the path to happiness. So some people, they seek it through fame. Some people seek it through wealth. Some people seek it through looks. And other than that, etc. Naam. And many times, these people at the end of all of that, they still don't find happiness. They still don't find happiness because many of them, they're missing a key ingredient, which is al-iman first and foremost, having correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, ta'a, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refused to grant happiness to those who do not obey him. Naam. So, Ikhwan, and we say, likewise, and this is perhaps بحكم التقليد والاختلاط مع الكفار You find some Muslims, they may, find, يعني they may follow behind certain people from among the kuffar being, uh, being impressed with what they have or just, again, due to our environment and our surroundings, hearing their speech, right? There's some Muslims, they may even get sidetracked as it relates to our, our goal in life and how to achieve happiness. And this is no doubt something everybody wants. Nobody wants to be sad. Nobody don't wants to be wretched. Nobody wants to be miserable. Naam. So... This is where it comes to light, Ikhwan, again, that our brother, Wafaqahullah Ta'ala, he was granted success in picking this topic as Imam Sa'adi's book. It addresses 
what many Muslims are experiencing. Uh, so in this book, Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala, no doubt, he hits the nail on the head in addressing these matters. And even when I had an opportunity to review this book, Akhwan, I was amazed after having never read it before. And I mentioned to Sheikh Hassan, I said, this is a book that needs to be a part of the curriculum even in our schools, our Islamic schools. This should be a part of the curriculum that our kids study maybe when they get to middle school or whatever, whatever is decided upon. But a book like this, it needs to be studied. Again, specifically, especially in this time where, again, many people, they've lost their way as it relates to how happiness is achieved due to, again, seeing things on social media and seeing things here or there. So this is a very important book, yeah, Juan. And just as it's important for us as adults, as we all experience in life calamities and sorrow and grief, this is just how the dunya is. That the servant is always revolving around either matters of prosperity, where he must be thankful, as we heard in the khutbah, or matters of calamities, where we must be patient, matters of difficulty, right? Or matters where we fall short and we must seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, and these are the anwar, and the 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 uh, unwan sa'ada, as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions. As Ibn Qayyim he mentions that these three matters are the unwan sa'ada. Now, and Sheikh Abdul Razak al Badr, and we'll be reading something from his explanation, inshallah ta'ala. He mentioned that he says, Wasfahu ba'du ahl ilm. He said, Walam yubid fi wasfihi. He said that some scholars to the point, they've described this book, they've described this book as being a place where psychological illnesses are cured. Right? They describe this book as a place where, if a person reads it, where psychological illnesses, where they are cured. Naam. And he says, in fact, it is found that many people have been cured of their humum and their gumum and their alam, their anxiety and their sorrow and their, and their sadness. And other than that, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated for them reading this tremendous book. Naam. And he says, and when you read this book, Ikhwan, Akhawat, and you see the good way that Sheikh Sa'adi he wrote this book and he prepared this book and he made these points in this book, right? He said that perhaps a person may think that the author, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Nasir al-Sa'adi, that when authoring it, that he was in a state of ease and that he was in a state of, 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 of يعني, uh, tranquility and comfort and well-being. He said, but la kinna He said, you'll be amazed to know that the Sheikh, he wrote this book while he was in the hospital, he was ill. He was sick in the, in, the, in the bed, in the hospital bed. And he said that the sheikh was complaining about some alam fi ra'sihi, like some migraines or what, that which is similar to that. Some, some pain in his head. Maybe migraines or that which is similar to that. He said up until the point that the doctors, they prevented him from reading and writing. They said this may adversely affect your health if you do this. This they said to Imam Sa'adi when he wrote this book. So Imam Sa'adi, he sat there in the, in, in, in the hospital, in his hospital bed, and he, he penned this beneficial treatise. And he didn't have with him any marajir, any resources, or anything like that to return to. Not like today, a person may want to look up something, you just get on your phone, you search a hadith, and you have apps and things like this. And no doubt the sheikh was an alim before that, was not in need of those matters. But the sheikh didn't have any marajir with him, any resources, but he sat down, and he wrote this from that which was stored in his memory. Naam. And thus, we find the result, uh, the book that we have here in front of us. A, trem a tremendous book, Akhwan, again, that, that we should read, and we should read with our families, and we should read with our children. Naam. Because, no doubt, these, these matters of sadness and, 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 and anxieties and stress and worries, nobody's safe from that. Not children, and, and not even adults. So this is something... Which, يعني, which is, which is a, a very beneficial topic and very appropriate during this time that we're in. Naam. 
And he says, so the Sheikh, he explained in the introduction that happiness, it revolves around the tranquility and the ease of the heart. And this is what Sheikh Hassan, he spoke about, that first point. And no doubt, again, Ikhwan, just pointing out, especially in this time of ours, certain polls, they pointed to what? They said that certain populations, to, today, they're unhappier than they've ever been. Right? Domestic abuses on the rise from what you, we see in the, in, in the news. People are in a state of anxiety and fear. Crime is rising in certain cities. Suicide rampant. Right? People having destructive thoughts. And a lot of this, no doubt, it stems from anxiety and grief and sadness and other than that. So in this tremendous book, remember, Sa'ad, he's mentioning those reasons, or he'll mention those reasons, or we'll, hear, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, inshallah, hear those reasons for the banishment of these, of these ills, and at the same time, how to achieve happiness and how to achieve contentment and ease of the heart. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us by way of this book, and uh, to make it a reason for us to attain happiness and to actualize happiness. So we'll read the first point, bi ta'ala. And the, uh, well, we'll read the first point that I'm uh, scheduled to read, ben- benevolence towards the creation. So we'll read benevolence towards the creation. So Imam Sa'adi. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, وَمِنَ الْأَسْبَابَ الَّتِي تَزِيلُ الْهَمَّ وَالْغَمُ وَالْقَلِقُ الْإِحْسَانُ إِلَى الْخَلْقِ بِالْقَوْلِ وَالْفِعْلِ وَأَنْوَعِ الْمَعْرُوفِ وَكُلُّهَا خَيْرٌ وَإِحْسَانٌ وَبِهَا يَدْفَعُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْبَرِّ وَالْفَاجِرِ الْهُمُومِ وَالْغُمُومِ بِحَسْبِهَا وَلَكِنْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِ مِنْهَا أَكْمَلَ الْحَظْ وَالنَّصِيبِ وَيَتَمَيَّزُ بِأَنَّ إِحْسَانُهُ صَادِرٌ عَنْ إِخْلَاصٍ وَاحْتِسَابٍ وَاحْتِسَابٍ لِثَوَابِهِ فيهون الله عليه عليه بذل المعروف لما يرجوه من الخير ويدفع عنه المكاره بإخلاصه واحتسابه قال تعالى لا خير في كثير من من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ومن ومن يفعل ذلك تبغ ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما فأخبر تعالى أن هذه الأمور كلها أن هذه الأمور كلها خير ممن صدرت منه والخير يجلب الخير ويدفع الشر وأن المؤمن المحتسب يؤتيه أجرا عظيما ومن جملة الأجر العظيم زوال الهم والغم والأكدار ونحوها So he says, إخوان, as we see here on page 13 in the translation he says, from the, from the means to banish anxiety, sorrow, and, wor- and worry is benevolence to the creation through speech, actions, and the types of good treatment. As all of them are good and acts of benevolence. And by way of this, Allah removes anxieties and sorrows from the pious and the wicked, depending upon the degree of this benevolence and good treatment. He says, however, the believer has the most complete share and portion of this. He is distinguished in this regard because his benevolence stems from sincerity and a desire for Allah's reward. As a result, Allah makes, e- Allah makes it easy for him to generously do good, good acts, and he repels from him difficulties. And this is a, it's a shahid here, Juan. He said, due to a sincerity in seeking Allah's reward. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم There's no good in most of their secret gatherings or secret talks except those who encourage charity, good acts, or reconciliation between the people. And whoever does this seeking Allah's pleasure, we shall give him a great reward. So he, the blessed and most high, he Azza wa Jal, informed us that all of these things mentioned in the verse are good deeds for those who perform them. And good brings good and repels evil. Alhamdulillah. And that Allah will give the believer who desires his great reward or his reward a great recompense. The elimination of anxiety, sorrow, anguish, and anything similar is part of this reward. Allahu Akbar. So we'll read some of the commentary ta'ala, from Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak al Badr. So 
So he says, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he says, so this is one of the reasons mentioned by Sheikh Sa'di. Al-Ihsan ila al-Khalq. Benevolence to or towards the creation. From those things that bring about happiness and banish a person's grief and sadness and worries. Doing good to the people. Benevolence to the creation. He said, أَن يَكُونَ الْإِنسَانِ هِمَّا فِي نَفْعِ النَّاسِ وَإِفَادَتِهِمْ وَتَقْدِيمِ وُجُوهِ الْخَيْرِ لَهُمْ That a person has determination in wanting to benefit the people and bring goodness to them and the different type, with the different types of goodness. And this can just be by saying good words to people. It can be بالأقوال, just by saying good words. To people, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in his book, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, And say good to the people. Or by giving them advice. Giving them advice. Pointing and directing them to what is good. Giving them irshad and tawjih. Likewise, extending the salams. Receiving people with open arms. Now, so this is some of the things that Sheikh Abdul Razak al he just mentioned. So for example, us here in Philadelphia, we have a conference, we have a dora. We have guests from out of, out of town. And we see them, alhamdulillah, we say good words to them. Jazakallah khayr, may Allah reward you for coming and being with your brothers upon the sunnah. Now, right? You smile when you see them, your guests. You take them out if you're able to. You may take them out to eat. If you're able, you smile when you see them, you wel- we welcome them with, good, with, with open arms. This is benevolence towards the people. Just an example of benevolence towards the people. And also by way of actions, he says. Those actions which a person is able to do as far as helping people. As far as helping people and extending goodness to them. Now you may find a person there behind on their rent. You may find a person, for example, they need help with eating or some t- food, buying food. Or, for example, moving from one place to another. Then this is benevolence in extending yourself in order to try to help the people. And Sheikh Sa'ad, he said, هذا الإحسان للخلق يدفع الله به البر والفاجر. And look at this point that Imam Sa'ad, he's making, إخوان. he says, by way of this goodness towards the creation... Allah removes grief and worry from the righteous and the wicked. And by way of this goodness towards the creation, Allah removes grief and worry from the righteous and the wicked. And this shows the, this shows the, 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 the tremendous nature of, of, this, of this matter of, of ihsan to the people. Naam. And likewise, it shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he recompenses good with good. As he says in his book, subhanahu wa ta'ala, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَى الْإِحْسَانِ Is the recompense for good anything but good? Is the recompense for good anything but good? So when a person does good towards the people, then the recompense for that goodness is goodness, no doubt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةِ And for those who do good, for them is husna. Naam. So he says, therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recompenses the servant's goodness to the creation by showing goodness to them. So this is something a person shouldn't look down upon. Showing goodness and extending goodness to the people and showing goodness to the creation. Sheikh Abdul Razak said, and this ihsan is not, it's not even limited to mankind, but rather if a person does goodness towards animals. For for example, showing them mercy. For example, you see an animal, a cat, for example, needs food. Or you see a dog that was hot and needed water. This is, this is ihsan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he rewards for it. So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you jazihi ala had al-ihsan bima la yakhturu ala bal al-abd. So Allah recompenses the servant for this ihsan with things that he, can, he cannot even imagine. With things that he cannot even imagine. But he says, however, but pay attention and tabih. 
When the mu'min shows ihsan, when the believer shows goodness, or does acts of goodness towards the creation, then this is coupled by what? Niyatun saliha. And this is coupled by a good intention. And likewise, patiently seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not wanting anything from the people. Not wanting, 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 any, wanting anything in return. Because a lot of times we're accustomed just due to where we grew up and just the, the culture that if somebody does something for you, I mean that if you do something for someone, they have to do something back for you, goodness, some, some type of good back for you. But, it, it, we, but the believer is not like this, Ikhwan. If we do something good for the people, we have a niya saliha, we do it with a good intention, and we hope for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want anything else. We don't want anything from the people. And this is just as Allah mentions in his book, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We only feed you seeking the face of Allah. We do not want for you any thanks nor any recompense. Naam. And perhaps it's suitable to mention here, Ikhwan, just while we're on this point, is that even when it comes to Badr al-ilm, disseminating ilm and knowledge, then Ahl al-Sunnah were distinct from Ahl al-Bid'ah. Ahl al-Sunnah were distinct from Ahl al-Bid'ah and the people of Hizbiyah. We don't, re- we don't request any compensation for the call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any money, anything in return. Unlike how you find the people of innovation, that you find that they request all types of money or lavish accommodations other than that when they are, are invited to speak to a particular, at a particular place. Right? And look how many people, they, be, they become corrupted because of this affair of, of wealth and, and them seeking this wealth upon, in, in, in the field of da'wah. Look how many people become corrupted, begging the people, seeking wealth from the people. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us efficiency. And Shaykh Muqbah, the author about this, 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 this matter, ذَمُّ masala. When he saw many of the people from يعني, some of the du'ats and some of those who ascribe to ilm, you know, running, back, running behind the different jam'iyat, the different organizations, running to Kuwait and different places where they give out money, and then next thing you know, you find these individuals, they start compromising that which they learn from Kitab and Sunnah. And this is, this is the reality. This is the reality. So it's upon the talib ilm. And this is for those, for the young brothers who want to seek ilm, it's upon you to seek to be sufficient. Bi idhnillahi ta'ala. Naam. So the Shaykh, he goes on to say, but as for the believer... He, put, he's, he puts forth goodness and he desires the reward of the hereafter. And he desires the reward of the hereafter. And he makes an important, an important point. He says that the one who puts forth goodness, Ihsan, and he does not intend by that the reward of the hereafter, then he only receives a return for that goodness. Asha mahduda min dunya Limited things of the worldly matters. There's no reward in the hereafter for him. Naam. But as for the hereafter, and the reward for the hereafter, then it is a must that a person, sa'alaha sa'yaha, a person strives by way of actions. They strive by way of actions. And they have a good, they have a good niya. So he says, so the believer... He patiently awaits his reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or because the believer patiently awaits his reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is easy for him to give his wealth. It's something easy for him. Why? Because he hopes for the recompense from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and in the next. Wallahu fadlu was and Allah's bounty is vast. Just as he hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repels from him hardships. And difficulties due to his sincerity 
and his patience in seeking, in seeking Allah's reward. And you find this, Ikhwan, if you look, look with the Kufar, Ikhwan, when you find them giving donations and you find them giving to charities, they rush to do what? To write it off. I'm going to do this because I'm going to write it off on my income tax. Or as soon as they do it, they want to they put it on social media. You know, we gave this to this and we gave this. So it's, it's only, they only seek the dunya behind their charitable acts. And their acts of benevolence, many of them. It's only the dunya they seek behind that. But again, as for the mu'min, the believer, then he seeks behind him being benevolent to the creation. He seeks, behind, he seeks by that the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter. And likewise, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repels from him hardships and difficulties due to the sincerity and do, na'am. And then Imam Sa'd he brings this verse from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this verse in Surah An-Nisa. La khayra fi kathir min najwahum illa min amra bi sadaqatin aw ma'roofin aw islahin bayn al-nas. There is no good in many of their secret gatherings except he who commands with charity, goodness, or reconciliation between the people. So Sheikh Abdul Razak, he says, so these matters, dear brothers, these matters of sadaqah and ma'roof and islah bayn al-nas, these matters of charity and giving charity, showing goodness, ma'roof, reconciling between the people. And we know that's a type of sadaqah, as the Prophet ﷺ told us. He said, a person may do them seeking the face of Allah, or they, may not, or they may do them not seeking the face of Allah. And it, is not, and it may not be, be found in his heart's sincerity or desire of ma'indallah, what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the one who does it seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for the good doers, the muhsinun, then he is the one who will attain reward. So look, ponder over this ayat, Ikhwan. This is this this, this ayat this, 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 this is Azim. Ayatun Azima. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these affairs of ma'roof, sadaqa, ma'roof, islah bain al nas. Allah said, Wa man yaf'al thalika tabtiga amardatillah. Fasofa nu'tihi ajran azima. And whoever does that seeking the face of Allah then we will give him a good reward. Then we will give him a tremendous reward. He says, Sheikh Abdul Razak says, so we see here that nail thawab illahi azza wa jal, attaining Allah's reward is dependent upon the intention. Is dependent upon the intention. Look, and whoever does that seeking the face of Allah, those matters of sadaqah, those matters of ma'roof. Those matters of islah bain al-nas. These are matters of benevolence. But it's the one who does the ikhwan seeking the face of Allah Azza wa Jal. That when you give, you give seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you make islah between, the pe- between two parties, for example, you do a seeking the face of Allah. Not wanting anything from either, either party. Not wanting anything from the dunya. Naam. When you command any type of ma'roof, when you do any acts of ma'roof, any acts of goodness, then the mu'min does it seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look, Allah says, and whoever does it seeking his face, then we will give him a, a, a tremendous reward. Then we will give him a tremendous reward. And we also have the well-known hadith of Umar radiallahu anhu, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Actions are by intentions. Which is a hadith that we all, that we're all familiar with. Actions are judged by intentions. So he says, therefore, seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the asas. It's the asas. It's the foundation. And it's the basis which every act of goodness should be based on. Seeking the face of Allah azza wa jal 
is the basis and foundation which every act of goodness should be based on. So he says, إِذَا وَجِدَتْ هَذِهِ النِّيَةِ الصَّالِحَةِ إِذَا وَجِدَتْ هَذِهِ النِّيَةُ الصَّالِحَةِ فِي قَلْبِهِ كَثَّرَ اللَّهُ قَلِيلَهُ وَبَارَكَ وَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِي إِحْسَانِهِ وَجُهْدِهِ وَأَثَابُهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي أُخْرَاهُ وَخَلَّفُهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي دُنْيَاهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So Sheikh Abdul Razak, he says, so if this righteous intention is found in his heart, the servant, the, the servant at the heart of the servant, then Allah will increase the little that he has and place barakah in his ihsan, his good doing, and his efforts. And Allah will reward him in the hereafter and will cause that that goodness to remain a benefit for him in his dunya. Naam. So he says, so khair brings about khair and it repels sharr. Khair brings about khair and it repels sharr. So this ajrun azim, this great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to in the ayah, Shaykh Abdul Razak says, among these matters is Allah banishing his ham and gham, his stress and his worry, or her stress and her worry, and those alam and those painful things that the heart may experience. Allah So that's the that's the that's this point, Akhwan, benevolence towards the creation. Now, to sum it up, that a person of a person makes ihsan to the creation, to the khalq. And they do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing what, what is ma'roof, giving sadaqah, reconciling for the, the people, anything that, that the word ma'roof entails. Anything that the word ma'roof entails. Helping a person with their luggage or whatever it may be. Anything that ma'roof entails, and a person does that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a reason for a person's happiness. This is a reason for a person to be rewarded in this life and in the next. And it's from the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will banish from a person, remove from a person, or repel from a person, stress and anxiety. Now, so that's, that's that point, Ikhwan. The next point, occupying oneself with beneficial knowledge or action. Occupying oneself with beneficial knowledge and action. So we'll read, inshallah ta'ala, from the Kalam bin Sa'di. So he says, وَمِنْ أَسْبَابِ دَفْعِ الْقَلَقِ النَّاشِئِ عَنْ تَوَأْتِرِ الْأَعْصَابِ وَاشْتِغَالِ الْقَلْبِ بَعْضِ الْمُكَدِّرَاتِ الْإِشْتِغَالُ بِعَمْلٍ مِنْ الْأَعْمَالِ أو علم من من العلوم النافعة فإنها تلهي القلب عن اشتغاله بذلك الأمر الذي أقلقه وربما نسي بسبب ذلك الأسباب التي أوجبت له الهم والغم ففرحت نفسه وازداد نشاطه وهذا السبب أيضا مشترك بين بين المؤمن وغيره ولكن المؤمن يمتاز بإيمانه وإخلاصه واحتسابه في اشتغاله بذلك العلم الذي يتعلمه أو يعلمه ويعمل الخير الذي يعمله إن كان عبادة فهو عبادة وإن كان شغلا دنيويا أو عادة دنيوية أصحبها النية الصالحة وقصد الاستعانة بذلك على طاعة الله فلذلك أثره الفعال آه نعم فلذلك أثره الفعال في دفع الهم والغموم والأحزان فكم من إنسان أبتلي بالقلق وملازمة الأكدار نعم ونسجن نعم فحلت به الأمراض المتنوعة فصار دواؤه الناجح نسيان السبب الذي كدره وأقلقه واشتغاله بعمل من مهماته وينبغي أن يكون الشغل الذي يشتغل فيه مما تأنس به النفس 
وتشتاقه فإن هذا أدعى لحصول هذا هذا المقصود النافع والله أعلم. And this point is likewise is a tremendous point, يا إخوان. And it shows that the ulama, even you know, some people they try to say the ulama they don't know the waqi and things like this. But Sheikh here he mentions a practical example, right? He mentions a practical matter which aids in banishing alham wal gham wal huzn, right? Worries and stress and sadness, etc. So he says from the means. To repel anxiety, which stems from nervousness and the heart being preoccupied with troublesome thoughts, is occupying oneself with an action or type of beneficial knowledge. That one occupies himself with an action or a type of beneficial knowledge. And this will distract the heart from preoccupying itself with the matter that is troubling it. As they say, what? Take your mind off it, right? That's what we hear. Take your mind off this. Do this to take your mind off that. He said, it may also make it forget about the things that have caused it anxiety and sorrow. So his soul becomes happy and his zeal increases. He said, this is also something that's applicable to the believer and disbeliever. However, again, look, the believer is distinct due to his faith, sincerity, in seeking Allah's pleasure when he busies himself with the knowledge that he is learning or a good action he is performing. And again, this is the, this is the benefit of these type of this, this book, Akhwan, that, like we were saying in the beginning, in the introduction. Because the people, how many self-help books that people, they write, you know, this is how you attain, this is how you attain happiness. This is how, you, you know, if you want to attain, attain happiness, read this book. These are the steps. And other than that, but, the person that may write that may have written that book is a mulhid, is an atheist, doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or they may even tell you in the book that religion is the problem. They may even mention in the book, no, religion is a problem. And you and this is this is this is mojood in the, in some of these books. So look how Imam al Sa'adi, how even we're mentioning, for example, in, in a, a practical matters, for example, in, 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 under this point, then he mentions. Likewise, how, how, those, how these matters are linked to the iman of the believer. Naam. So he says, however, the believer is distinct due to his faith, due to his iman, and due to his sincerity. And seeking Allah's pleasure when he busies himself with the knowledge that he's learning or a good action he is performing. And this is true whether it is an act of worship, in which case it is considered to be religious worship, a worldly activity or practice accompanied by a righteous intention and intended to aid in the obedience of Allah. For this reason, it has a powerful effect in removing anxieties, sorrows, and miseries. He said, how many people have been affected or afflicted with distress and constant worries, which results in them suffering from various illnesses? Naam. Because stress makes you, it makes you, it can make you physically sick. He says, thus the effective cure for them is to forget the reason that caused this distress and worry and for them to preoccupy themselves with an action from their daily activities. And this activity that he busies himself with, it must be something that the soul enjoys and yearns for, as this surely will have a more thorough effect in actualizing this beneficial goal. Wallahu a'lam and Allah knows best. Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Abad, he briefly comments, on this particular uh, portion. And we'll read it inshallah ta'ala. And it's, it's very quick. It's, it summarizes basically which Sheikh Sa'ad he mentions. He says, so here's another means that the Sheikh, he, that the Sheikh mentions, which is a reason for uh, banishing worry and stress. And this is that one does not allow their mind to be Occupied with that matter that is causing him or causing her stress or or anxiety. The more a person you fakir fi hadil asha, the more a person thinks about those matters, then the more anxiety and worry it causes them. He says, so what the Sheikh is advising the Muslim with here is what? 
is that he occupies himself or she occupies herself with some type of beneficial action. And this is whether it's from the religious deeds, such as worship and beneficial knowledge, that which will benefit him. Maybe a religious deed. Naam. Memorizing the Quran, challenging himself to memorize hadith, or memorizing a, a metzim in al-mutun, right? Or even maybe something from the worldly matters. It may be something from the worldly matters that a person may like to do, such as a profession or a trade that one takes up. For example, may a, maybe a person, a woman, she may, like, she may like, for example, gardening, for example. It may bring her peace of mind. You know, this, this man, he may, like, he, he, might, he may like, for example, he may like working out or swimming or whatever. Or a particular trade. But he says, the sheikh says, the point here is what? That one does not sit idle, right? Thinking about those worries. One does not sit idle, busying themselves with those worries. Lest those thoughts increase and then a person's anxiety and worry, uh, etc., will increase. So he says, so here the sheikh, he's mentioning a sababun amali. He's mentioning a practical matter. This is a practical matter that will aid him in banishing these worries and this anxiety. That he busies himself with an action which will allow him to forget those matters and thus not remain in a state of worry and anxiety. And does not remain in, he will not remain in a state of worry and anxiety. So somebody, a person does that which is beneficial, that which is maybe even, again, something dunyawi, but it's mubah, it's permissible to do. So a person does that thing, and that thing, inshallah ta'ala, will allow, uh, you know, will take his mind off those matters which are causing him stress or causing her stress and worry. And he said another benefit in doing this, meaning busying oneself with some type of action, is that a person will become active. Right? Because a lot of times when you find a person there in a state of worry and stress and things like that, they just sit around and they just may eat all day and they may, you know, they leave off activity. They just stay in the house. They may stay in a dark room or they may, you know, just sit around eat, eat, eating all day or whatever they may do. This is the reality of what, what, what occurs with stress and anxiety. So he says another benefit in doing this, Sheikh Abdul Razak al Abad says, is that a person, a person will become active. It will increase a person's activeness. He said, then the Sheikh mentioned that this means is applicable to the believer and disbeliever. The dis disbeliever may even do this, but again, where is the Muslim distinct? The Muslim is distinct that even when doing worldly actions, that he holds a pure intention within his heart and he patiently seeks Allah's reward. That he holds a good intention within his heart. He said, you know, I, know I have to get myself better for my, you know, so I can worship my Lord, you know, so I can, you know, be there, spend time with my children and things like this, you know, so I can do those things beneficial in the religion. So they hold a pure intention within their heart. And likewise, they patiently seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala, and then after Isha, because this was Sheikh Abdul Hassan's, uh, his portion. Uh, he wasn't able to make it, hafidhahullah ta'ala, due to some ashra that he had. Um, so we took the slot, and inshallah ta'ala, after Isha, we'll read the, um, we'll read the next two points, inshallah ta'ala.